Good morning and welcome to worship. Will you stand and join us in a time of praise? sang joy to the world and uh, this is the year this is the time of the year that we sing but some of us are coming this morning probably most of us feeling conflicted about joy knowing just 48 hours ago a little town in Connecticut was thrust into a horror that we have a hard time wrapping our minds around and we wonder why such darkness can permeate and uh, our hearts and our prayers certainly go out to that little town but this morning, I want to remind you of another dark time when another man, thousands of years ago, 
looked into the future and said, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And this light has risen upon men. And a few chapters later, he gets even more specific when Isaiah says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And so if you're conflicted this morning and wrestling with questions, know that we have a wonderful counselor. And this wonderful counselor is in charge of a world that seems like it's spinning out of control because he's Almighty God. He wants to be our everlasting Father. And we have reason for joy and celebration today because he is the Prince of Peace. This time of the year is a joyous time. We know the reason to celebrate. We know the reason to sing. We know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so if we pray for anything this morning, I want to pray that we turn our hearts and our minds to another little town, a town of Bethlehem, and what happened 2,000 years ago. We have reason to celebrate because it's Christmas. Good morning. Hey, great job, kids. Wonderful. And you guys did good too. Hey, welcome to worship at uh, Cross Point Church this morning. And Rick, thank you for your uh, comments uh, earlier this morning. Thinking about that too, of that conflicting um, 
uh, spirit right now and wondering, you know, how do you worship and, and those kind of things uh, in the midst of this week. So thank you for your wonderful comments, Rick. Uh, if you're a, a visitor here this morning, we want to especially welcome you uh, and are so uh, privileged that you would be uh, with us this morning. If you are a visitor, there's some cards in the, in the um, seat back pockets in front of you called connection cards. If you would fill that out and drop that in the offering bag that comes around in a few minutes, uh, we would be blessed to know that you are here with us and that gives us an opportunity uh, to get to know you. Last night was a great night uh, here in Bethlehem. Uh, Cross Point Church was transformed into the little town of Bethlehem last night, and an incredible musical that we get to be a part of again this morning, and uh, the courtyard decorated uh, like Bethlehem, and a wonderful blessing. So many from our community were here, uh, and we pray that God will use that to minister to hearts and to awaken hearts to his glory. So great night. Thank you for all who helped and participated, and to, yeah. To pull something off like that uh, in one day, I, I left last night just thinking about that, how amazing that was. So, so many people had a part in that, and we just want to say thank you for that. One more announcement, uh, and that is this morning we are taking a offering for Beautiful Gate, uh, and it is a special offering. And if you want to give to Beautiful Gate, that is a child care center in Lesotho, Africa that our church supports. Uh, please uh, put your check or cash in the white envelopes in the chairs in front of you. Uh, you'll find them in that same pocket that the, that the connection cards are in, and then drop that in the offering bag uh, when it comes around. That offering is going to go to uh, bless the staff at Beautiful Gate, and not the administrative staff, but the actual local people from Lesotho who uh, work at Beautiful Gate. So it's the caretakers of the children, the local people. And I think that's really awesome that we have an opportunity to bless them. So that's where that offering is going to go to. Uh, and so if you feel called to give, uh, put it in the white envelopes and drop it in the offering bag. Um, we want to continue our time of celebration this morning and worship. Uh, so stand up, uh, greet those around you. And parents, if you have a child up here, maybe you can come and grab your child and bring them back uh, to your seat with you. God's typewriter. I know, I know, pretty primitive. But if it was good enough for Hemingway or Tolkien, who am I to argue? Besides, this? Oh, great. Even worse. It just feels so much better than click, drag, delete. 
It just doesn't have the same finality as the paper crumbling in the hand, or that less than satisfying bounce as um, another rejected idea hits the floor. Do you have any idea how hard it is to come up with a fresh idea for a Christmas script? How many variations are there on Scrooge? Or tired monologues by Bible characters in bathrobes whining how they don't understand, or we've waited so long. 400 years. Yes, they waited a long time. But so have audiences for a fresh idea. No, no, this not only has to be fresh, it has to be real. <laughs> real people, real life. That's where grace finds you. In the middle of your reality, no matter how messy it might be. I need to create a family. It's not too original, I know, but it's something I can work with. Uh, let's see. A dad and a couple of kids. Let's call him Frank. Career? Uh, it doesn't matter much. Thanks a bunch. Hey! The general population has no clue what Mr. Cleaver did in Leave it to Beaver. Not to mention what's his face and father knows best. Face it, you go to work, you bring home a paycheck. Leave it at that. Whatever. Uh, you're also active in church. In fact, you recently joined a men's accountability group. Yeah. What's that? Every Friday morning, you get up extra early and meet with a group of guys and your pastor at a local diner. And what do we do there? The usual. Talk, guy stuff, sports, and of course, answer the pastor's questions. And what does he ask? He asks the leading spiritual questions that allow you to confess to the group what a spineless spiritual schmuck you are. That's not very nice. You're a character. Get over it. Pastor asks the question, you mumble something innocuous, and pray he moves on to someone else. I should have a little more spiritual backbone. In your heart, sure. But in that pitfall-strewn journey of 18 inches from a man's heart to his mouth, it gets mushed. It's a guy thing, trust me. I have a choice. Playwright rules every time. Right. I'm a spineless spiritual schmuck. <laughs> There's something else. I'm almost afraid to ask. No, you'll like this. You love your kids. You do anything for them, even if it makes you uncomfortable. Wait, right, that's not bad. <laughs> no, it's not. One more thing. Here it comes. At the last meeting, your pastor handed out a packets of dad lead Bible studies you're supposed to do with your kids as you approach Christmas. Yeah, he thinks the kids need to be refocused. Refocus the kids, sort of a bring Jesus back into Christmas thing? Yeah. I can do that. And therein lies the tale. Okay, let's get Frank set up. He's in his living room, in a chair. Oh, 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 let's make that his favorite chair in front of his big screen TV. It should probably be one of those sloppy, ugly recliner things. Ah, yes, my chair. Frank's been known to sit like this for hours. <sighs> I can't hold this forever. Realizing his children will appear in a moment, Frank sits up and <sighs> opens the family study packet his pastor gave him. Oh, As I'm not doing that again. Well, okay, if you don't want to. As Frank studies, his children appear. Um, average family, make that two kids. Boy, girl. Make the girl a little older. Oh yeah, that allows for all the younger brother comic genius stuff. Let's put her in middle school with, oh, I've got it, a phone. Yes, we have a child who lives or dies by the text message. Oh, he is so cute, and he texted me. I've got to tell Samantha. Great. Ooh, character name. Let's say Frank's wife had to be cute with the names. How about a couple of D's? Devin and Derek. I can kind of see where Devin's going. Derek, Derek. He's younger. 
Oh, duh. What else? A preteen gamer. Frank now arrives at the moment he most dreads. Why don't you just put me at the state penitentiary already? I can just hear the guards. Dead man walking. Frank vents his frustration. Hey, kids, let's talk a minute. Uh, kids, your dad's talking here. Dad, I'm busy. Let me clear this level. Dad, I'm busy. Let's try this again. Hey, kids, let's talk. Still busy. Come on, go, go, go. Frank finds the remote control by his chair. Thank you. With a masterful two-handed move, Frank flourishes the imaginary remote control to turn off the imaginary TV and take the imaginary phone out of Devin's hand. Dad, this is so the beer. You've got to be kidding me. I'm sure I just saved you from a messy, untimely death. You can thank me later. And as for you, young lady, what's with all the abbreviations? Trying to be a Navajo wind talker or something? Now, do I have your rapt attention? This is a multiple choice question. Remember how I said we wanted to help our pastor with his family-led Bible studies? We? We, plural for you, have no choice. Please remember, bonus points will be added for volunteer cooperation when positive initiative is shown during the process. Translation? Cooperate and the torch ends sooner. Well said, Dev, well said. The pastor's idea was to take a different part of the Christmas story every day. He thinks that we should involve, involve our kids in it, not just talk to them, but have them interact. Let's see what he has for today. Imagination and visualization are important and sometimes underestimated aspects of the learning process. Say to your children, imagine you are a sheep. A sheep, as in Mary had a little lamb sheep? Apparently. Bah! <laughs> you did this to me. Ah, uh, Frank stalled for time. Yeah, right. That. I got it. You stink. Get it? E W E U. That was a good one. An even better one. Bah, humbug. Would you cool it with the sheep jokes already? Look, okay, he, the pastor didn't specifically have you guys in mind. Come to think of it, most of the men of the accountability group have younger kids. So for them, the sheep thing was a pretty good idea. Look, you know where we're going, right? Sure, sheep, shepherds, and angels. He does not get points for that, just saying. Okay, hey, you wanna know something cool that a pastor taught me the other day? Do you know what the word internet is, translated into French, German, Romanian, and Vietnamese? This, coming from the man who can never get the order right at the Taco Bell drive through C. Humor me. Points. I want points. Okay, how do you translate the word internet in whatever languages you said? All right, the answer is, drum roll please. Internet. Now, what exactly have you been doing every Friday morning at your breakfast? Look, the word 400 years ago, the, or hundreds of years ago, the word angel came into our language from Greek, much the same way our word internet has gone into all those other languages today. In Greek, the word agalos meant messenger. It became our word angel. Can I have my phone back? I need to agalos a friend. If you can answer one more question. Just answer Jesus. The answer's almost always Jesus. Sunday School 101. When in doubt, just answer Jesus. Breakfast next Friday is sure going to be interesting. My phone. All right. What do angels almost always have to say when they appear to dwellers on earth? And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. I had some memorize this last year for the choir program. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. It's fear not. Give the little lady a prize. In this case, her phone.
They told me in writing class, be careful, your characters can get away from you. Up until that last scene, I was never quite sure what that meant. This scene, I'll try to do a little better. It's been a few days. Ooh, in fact, Frank actually made another Friday morning breakfast. At the table, his was the most interesting report. Of course. Uh, the pastor made a few adjustments for him, and now Frank feels like he's really ready to lead his children on a Bible study experience. Maybe yes. Maybe no. Scene opens. Lights come up. Let's put Frank back in his chair. I wonder where the kids are tonight. Tonight it's Magi time. Oh, Derek, Devin, your presence is requested in the den. I think Dad's going to have to up his game a little. Oh, Derek. I know your login. If you don't get down here right now, I'm going online as you. I'm going to fight like a pathetic loser, and you'll be explaining yourself to your friends for weeks. You know, I bet I could kill off all of your characters in just under five minutes. I consider that a personal challenge. Oh, wait, doesn't that mean you'll have to start all over? Don't touch anything. I'll be there in a minute. One down. Now. Do I get creative, or do I stick with that tried and tested tool of parenting, the direct threat? Let's try a little of both. Let's see, no vowels, that's right. Dev, did, hear. Want to keep your phone, question mark. 10, 9, 8, send. Daddy, you wouldn't, would you? Never hurts to keep them guessing. Well, if it isn't eager listener, li learners. You know, if you put a court-ordered angle bracelet tracker thing on us, you would know we were 24-7. Don't give him any ideas. And I'm sure you're looking forward to helping Pastor Gary with his, new, with his new lesson. You know, he wrote it just for you. Like me to check some things? Can you read cell phone Navajo? I can spell. Can we get on with it, whatever it is? Good point. <laughs> Put a cork in it. OK, here we go. Imagine you are a camel. What is a camel? I absolutely like? refuse to. That is disgusting. You cannot make me do this. Just kidding. Relax. Calm down. Spelling and rude noises aside, Pastor and I both think you two are pretty sharp. He wanted to find out just how much you know. Uh, test? Now we're having tests in church? Hey, if Pastor took all the time to write these questions out, the least you could do is try your best to answer them. Hey, the rest of the kids are putting together desert dioramas of things cut out from little, little sh Christmas cards. That sounds like fun. Hey, Dad, just kidding. Remember the last one I had to do on American history? <laughs> yeah, that's right. The teacher couldn't tell if it was the Gettysburg Address or Washington crossing the Delaware. Hey, there's only so much you can do with Plato and Legos. The questions, please. Right. OK, here goes. Pastor wrote all these questions. He made me answer them at our last meeting. Some of them may surprise you. I'm ready. Shoot. How many wise men were there? Duh, that's easy. Three. At least that's what was in all the pictures. Wrong. The Bible doesn't say how many travelers there were, only how many gifts. Next question. Were the wise men at the manger? Sure. Every pageant we've ever done, the wise men were knocking over the shepherds to get to the manger. Wrong again. The Bible actually places, doesn't play, says they didn't come until a long time later. They place Jesus at a house and call him a child rather than a baby. But what about King What's-His-Face and the slaughter of all the babies? Two years and under. Some say that's what gives us a clue. OK, next question. This re may require a little thought. Did the wise men see the star at dusk or at dawn? You're asking me a science question. I don't know what dusk means. And since the story says that they saw the star in the east. So I think I'll go with dawn. Is that your final answer? Depends. Are you actually giving away a million dollars? And the last time you asked for all money? Point taken, you're broke. 
Yeah, that's our final answer. Wrong. They were in the east. So to travel in the right direction, they had to have seen the star in the west. Are we done yet? Almost. What were the gifts? That's easy. I've got this one. Gold, Marish, or something or other, and Frankenstein. You know what that last answer? I think people would actually pay to see a diagram of the scene. You do know it's frankincense, don't you? Details, details, details. All right, so each of the gifts were symbolic, but do you know what they symbolized? I'll give you a hint. Gold symbolized Jesus as a king. That's cheating. You took the easy one. Want me to cut to the chase? Absolutely. I stand in fear of what Boy Wonder over there would do with this Frankenstein. Okay. Frankincense was an incense burned in the temple. It symbolized Jesus as a high priest. Myrrh was associated with embalming, so it symbolized Jesus' sacrificial atoning death. Now, we're almost to the end. What did the wise men expect to find, and what did they really find? And how are we supposed to know that? I'll give you a hint. Did they go right to Bethlehem, or did they stop somewhere else first? They went to Jerusalem. And why did they go there? Because that's where they expected to find a king in a palace. And what did they really get? All they got were directions to Bethlehem. All right, and so here's my favorite question. If they had found a newborn prince at the palace, do you think they would have worshipped? If I would have said, thanks, here's some gifts, and arrivederci. <laughs> I didn't know this until the pastor pointed it out. But while living in the east, the wise men saw the star in the... West. But did the star lead them across the desert, like you see in the pictures on all the Christmas cards? Since you're asking, I'm guessing no. Right. They saw the star when they were in the east and traveled in faith to Jerusalem because it was the obvious place for a king. Do you know why some people teach that? I bet you just can't wait to tell us. <laughs> when they departed Jerusalem, the Bible says the star reappeared and they rejoiced with great joy. Well, the star couldn't have reappeared if it hadn't disappeared in the first place. You see, God used this reappearing miracle of the sky to bring them to a humble place, an unexpected place, and all they could do was to bow and worship.
things seem to be coming along nicely. Poor Devon may not be the sharpest crayon in the box, but as a family, it all seems to work. Frank is gaining confidence as a spiritual leader. The kids are engaged, learning a little. Let's see. Frank is back in his chair. He has his feet propped up. Other side of the chair, Frank. Yeah, right. Uh, let's see. He's a reclined and asleep. He's been asleep for a long time. Sleep, Frank, sleep. I'm sleeping already. <sighs> Suddenly from the bedroom, a scream. Ah! You little twerp. Where are you? I'm going to kill you. Frank awakens with a start. <laughs> That wasn't much of a startled expression, but I'll let that go for now. Thanks. Shouldn't you try to go find out what's happening? Yeah, right. Dev! Characters, you have to tell them everything. Dev, before you do something we'll all regret, get down here and come to think of it. Derek, make tracks down here as well. Dad, cut his allowance. Put him in a straitjacket. I'll come in a closet with nothing but bread and water. You can even throw away the key. Whatever it was, I didn't do it. And if I did, I would have a good excuse. She drove me into it. I was just a helpless little pawn in her plan. All right, all right. Can we bring this down to something a little under the level of headbanger? Twerp boy hacked my Facebook page. You didn't upload baby pictures of your sister again, did you? I wish. But for once, I can cut to the chase. Ha! I'm innocent. You're sinful until proven innocent. Let's not sidetrack into theology, okay? Derek? Let the record show. Would you please be quiet? Hey, hey, the defendant must speak. Who knows, he may hang himself with his own testimony. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, there was no way I could have hacked her Facebook page. Even you know his wife. Even you know why his father. My, my smartphone is kaput. Broken. It's a goner. Uh, all right, all right. Kid has a point. He hacked me and posted ugly things about me. He even made fun of my name. Every kid in school already knows about it. I found out because Julie texted me. Seriously, Dev, I didn't do it. I broke my phone shooting hoops on the driveway three days ago. Even checked the Christmas lids on the fridge. Derek, new phone. Read it and weep. But if you didn't, who did? Are you getting along with the other kids at school? You know that football player that you liked? Well, how about his girlfriend? It was her. Better than me. Okay, all right. So, have you deleted all the thing, all the information, and changed your password? I'm not stupid. Like a second opinion? Cool it. So you say you've done damage control? For now. Okay, then. The next time your dad's asleep in front of the TV, could you manage to wake him up a little nicer? But she made fun of my name. Believe me, I feel your pain. With a name like Frank, do you have any idea how long I've had to endure the where's your bun jokes? Then Frank had a flash of inspiration. I just had a flash of inspiration. Now would be a great time to check out the Bible study for today. Well, that's all settled. I think I gotta go check something in my Nice room. try. Won't work. Stay. So. Now seems like a good time. You'll be glad to know that it's short. Thanks, Pastor. I'll convey your sentiments. What's in a name? Indeed, very appropriate. I'm thrilled. Actually, there was someone who was thrilled. You can also add apprehensive and confused to the mix as well. Who? She was about your age. Mary? Jesus' mom? Bingo. Dad, no one says that anymore. Might as well say, Yahtzee. About that broken phone? B, 13. That's more like it. Okay. Devin, do you remember what the angel Gabriel told Mary when he appeared to her? Fear not. That's a given. She's blessed among all women. Keep going. She would have a son and name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. That's my girl. But what does his name mean? The playwright does know how to insert the right question. Aw, thank you. Now, answer her question. Pastor says in the day, the name Jesus was fairly common. In fact, there was a hero of the Old Testament who had the same name. We just pronounce it a little differently. 
There was someone named Jesus in the Old Testament? <laughs> and the walls came a tumbling down. Samson? You never give the kid a break, do you? Oh, all right. Joshua! Wow, Dev, great recovery. Thank you. Pastor says that he might lead a Bible study in the future contrasting Jesus and Joshua. He says it would be a very interesting study. I can't wait. I'll make sure you have a front row seat at every session. So the name Jesus, or Yeshua, means salvation is from God. That's convenient. That's just one more way the Lord wanted to make his intentions for us perfectly clear. His name foretold and added emphasis to the moment when Jesus would tell his disciples that he alone was the way, the truth, and the life.
Well, I'm almost to the point of typing the two words authors and playwrights most love to see. Well, that is besides their name on a publisher's royalty check. The end. But before I type them in, I'd like you to think about something. You remember when I told Frank, playwright rules? Consider this. In the book of Hebrews, Jesus is referred to as the author and finisher of our faith. I can tell you from personal experience, his great desire is to be at the heart of your life, penning a story that started in eternity past and will continue on after this scarred, tired world has long been put away. Some would say it starts with the writing of your name in his book, the Lamb's Book of Life. I tell you a truth. There's only one way onto those pages so carefully inscribed in crimson, and the Word of God makes it clear. But angels rejoice as name after name fills those pages. They wait to celebrate over you as well. Indeed, there is only one playwright, the author who finishes what he starts and will rule for all eternity. He's written a part for you as well. Are you ready to take your place on his stage of life? Amen. Let's uh, thank the choir and the actors. It's awesome. What a powerful story, amen? And uh, we live in a day and age where um, the world says there are no more stories. Uh, science teaches us that uh, this world just came to be uh, by an accident. Over billions and billions and billions of years, uh, the world kind of came to be out of this stuff. And, and you and I are here today kind of out of an accident. And science says that the world's going to end the same way. It's going to be just this accident. It's kind of going to end as it started as an accident. But I think deep down in all of us, we know, as we heard today, there is another story that is taking place. And we know it in our hearts, and, and we see that in the movies we go to and the dramas that we go to and the novels that we read. There is this epic story that grabs our hearts. And how many of you went to see The Hobbit already? Anyone see The Hobbit? Incredible story, right? Why do people stay up till midnight to go to see The Hobbit or uh, when I was a boy, it was Star Wars? Because in those stories, there's something epic going on that relates to something deep in our hearts. It says in the book of Ecclesiastes 3.11 that God makes everything beautiful in his time. And he has put in the hearts of every man and every woman eternity. He has written eternity in our hearts. Even though we cannot fathom what God is doing at the end and at the beginning, we don't understand that. God has written, though, there is eternity in our hearts. And so we know there is a story, even though science says this world is an accident and it's going to end in an accident, there is something in us that knows there is a bigger story. And all the epic stories like the Lord of the Rings, the Hobbits, uh, the sound of music, right? All of those stories borrow from this bigger, bigger story, this epic adventure that you and I are in. And all the stories go like this. There is this time where everything's okay, right? Everything's good. And then evil enters in, chaos, and, and some evil spirit, like in Star Wars. Who was the evil guy in Star Wars? Darth Vader, right? 
And, and he comes in, and evil lurks in, and it changes everything. Evil changes everything. And then we see this adventure taking place. And in the middle of this adventure, a hero comes. In the sound of music, who is the hero? Julie Andrews, Maria, right? Who who brings the family together in the hobbits. Who is the hero? Bilbo Baggins, right? This unlikely hero that comes onto the scene. In Lord of the Rings, it's, it's Sam and Frodo. And these unlikely heroes come in, uh, into the scene and, and they save the day and bring all the wrongs and make them right. They borrow that story from the story of Scripture of a God who made the world good. Amen. He saw it and he said, it is good. And then the evil villain comes, the dragon, the serpent comes, and he brings chaos and confusion by saying, hey, you don't need to follow God. And and the enemy comes and he disturbs things. But God had a plan, a master plan, and we heard about it this morning. And that's why we should never get sick of the Christmas story, amen, amen. This is a story of God's incredible love. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that what did he do? He gave his only son. And we hear it in the drama. It was was a little quirky, right? A little funny. It was great. Guys did an awesome job. But it's a story of God's love. And he he gave his love, his his incredible love that whoever believes in it, and here is the the hero. And he doesn't look like much of a hero. He's born in a manger. He's born in Bethlehem. He's not born in Jerusalem. He is born in a smelly manger. And he lives in poverty. And then three and a half years, he, he comes and God fills him with the Spirit. And he brings hope And he dies this crazy death on the cross and bleeds and cries out, it is finished. And at that moment, he becomes this glorious hero who does the glorious impossible. And he bled and he died to take our sins away. And he rose from the dead and he became the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And whoever believes in him, whoever follows him, will have everlasting what? Life. And Sarah and I, we, we went to The Hobbit. We love The Lord of the Rings. And so I'm one of those guys. And Sarah and I went to The Hobbit. And, and it's a great, great story because here's this little hobbit named Bilbo Baggins. And he lives in this hobbit hole. And he lives in this place called the Shire, and it's comfortable. And it reminds me of America. It reminds me so much of the world that you and I live in, that we have this nice little comfortable stuff, and we, we have all these the food that we ever need. And then all of a sudden, this guy named Gandalf comes in, this Holy Spirit imagery guy. And he says to this little hobbit who's so comfortable, he said to him in the book especially, he said, Bilbo Baggins, you are more than you know. You were made for more. You were made for a venture. You were made for more than you will ever realize. And that's what this story preaches to us. He gave his only son that you may have life and have it not only eternally, but abundantly. And God says, come, follow me out of your comfortable hobbit hole where life is pretty good and you're safe and you're comfortable, but I have something much greater. Come and be, God says, my follower. Come and be my disciple and bring my love and bring my grace and bring that message of Christmas to a world that needs to see Jesus Christ so desperately. And we are so aware of that as we've been watching the news And you think about what happened in Connecticut, and you wonder about that young man's life who took all those innocent lives, and you hear bits and pieces of that story. And I wonder if, I wonder if someone along the way would have showed him God's unconditional love, God's amazing grace, 
And we, he, we live in this world that we see darkness kind of permeating in our society because we've lost the story. We've lost the message. And when we hear that message of God's incredible grace, and when you receive that gift of love, you cannot stay in your hobbit hole. You need to go out, and you need to be the love of Jesus Christ to a world who desperately needs to see the light. That is the message. That is the hope. That is what our world needs so desperately. That, didn't you love the song, The Glorious Impossible? And so Jesus Christ comes to live right in your heart, to bring you out of your comfort zone, and to bring his love and bring his presence to a world that needs to see Jesus Christ so desperately. So we have all the beautiful songs and we have the great story, but it means nothing if we don't say, yes, I will follow you out of my little comfort zone, out of all the, the, the riches that I have. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that and I'm going to follow Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So what a gift we can give to the world, amen? What a gift. And we think about that as Bob and, uh, Bob and Deb, are you here or are you going to be in the second service? They're leaving tonight for Africa, for Lesotho, and they're taking a group of APU students with them. Oh, there you are. Come on down. Are you guys all packed? All over the floor. We are so proud of you. You guys are leaving. I, you haven't seen uh, uh, The Hobbit yet, have you? We are so proud that you're leaving your Hobbit hole. And you're going all the way to Lesotho. Uh, Rebecca and Rachel, thank you for saying yes. I know this is your second time. I know the Gearinks are so excited to have you come. Why don't you just share? Uh, we're going to have an offering. Deacons are going to come forward in, in a second. And why don't you share a little bit about what you're doing and and what, what this offering's going to do uh, for uh, the staff at Beautiful Gate. I don't know who wants to. Okay. Well, we're um, taking about nine uh, students from Azusa Pacific University, and we're um, going there to have them learn about how a country addresses social problems, and particularly at Beautiful Gate. We'll be spending our time there in, in, in terms of the HIV virus that's going on with the, the kids and the, the results that they have no parents or the kids themselves are exposed to that, and so we're going to be spending a lot of time there and kind of learning around uh, um, in, the, in the city there in Maseru. And so that's um, one purpose of the trip. Yeah, you want, did you want, to, uh, want me to say something about the offering? Or? Yeah, the, um, the staff at Beautiful Gates is an incredible group of people. Uh, they're loving, they're caring, they're dealing with... Uh, uh, kids who, uh, for the most part, have no parents, and, and dealing with a lot of HIV-positive uh, kids as well. And these, uh, these staff, they work for what you and I might consider a uh, week's wages uh, annually. And so this morning's offering uh, is not only going to help cover some of the operating expenses, potentially of Beautiful Gate, but I believe the primary purpose is actually to provide a Christmas bonus for a staff that is sacrificial in their giving and in their work. So thank you for participating in that. Yeah, and there's also people are donating gifts and they're gonna take about four suitcases full of stuff. So thank you for that. Um, the offering is general fund, but the second offering, or it's, you can just mark it as Brian said, for Beautiful Gate. So uh, you're going to be there for about three weeks. Your Christmas will be out there. You guys ready to have Christmas in Africa? You're leaving grandpa and grandma and going out to, to spend Christmas in Africa. That is so cool. And we, we as a church just want to uh, pray for you and bless you. And again, thank you for bringing uh, the love of Jesus Christ to another part of the world. Uh, and you're showing that love and that grace and bringing great gifts with you. So let's, uh, let's bless you guys. Father, we thank you uh, so much for the gift of Jesus Christ. We're here this morning because a little baby uh, 2,000 years ago came to Bethlehem. 
and he left all the glory of heaven, all the glory of eternity, and he emptied himself, and he became as a servant to serve us, to grow up, to live a perfect life, to die on the cross, to take away our sins, to be raised from the dead and to become the King of kings and Lord of lords so that he may live in our hearts. The hearts of those who need him, the hearts of those who know they're sinful, the hearts of those who know they need a savior and to live in us in such a way to transform our lives that we become like Jesus as we have been given this great gift of salvation, as we, we have been given this great gift of grace, God, we leave our little hobbit holes and we go into the world and we bring the message of Jesus Christ. We bring the message of his everlasting love. And Father, we thank you for Deb and Bob and Rebecca and Rachel that they are mirroring, mirroring the love of Jesus Christ. They are reflecting his glory as they give up the comforts of uh, America and Christmas with their family. And they bring a group of students down to a, a place where it's uh, poverty and HIV AIDS is rampant and suffering and pain. And they bring the light of your presence. And we thank you, almighty God, for their yes. We thank you, mighty God, that they're going to bring your love and for the gifts of uh, these gifts, the offerings that are going to go down to uh, beautiful gay. We thank you and praise you in advance for how that's going to bless the staff there, how they're going to be encouraged, how they're going to um, be able to bless their families as well. Father, as Bob and Deb and Rebecca and Rachel step out in faith this Christmas season, Father, we pray that we would do that. Lord, we are, we are aware of the tragedy uh, in Connecticut. And Father God, we know that we can make a difference and maybe it's a, a hug to somebody who's lonely. Maybe it's a word of encouragement. Maybe this Christmas season, it's, it's bringing uh, some cookies over to the neighbor that we don't know very well. Maybe it's uh, sharing the love of Jesus in the coffee shop, or maybe it's going to that hospital room and visiting that person in need. Father, let us bring that Christmas message. Let us bring that Christmas joy, that joy that Jesus Christ has brought to us. And Father God, let us live for your glory and for your honor. And people know that there's hope uh, in Jesus Christ alone. And that we can be part of that story and that our names can be written in that book of life uh, that gives us eternity forever in Jesus. So bless our friends. Lord, bless us all. And let us live this Christmas season and beyond for your glory and honor. And all God's people said, Amen. Please stand as we uh, close this service in song. Lord 
Um, can you hear me now? Thank you, uh, choir. Thank you uh, for all the work and the drama uh, team. What a great job. Let's give them one more round of applause. And for the kids, you guys did awesome. So thank you uh, very much. Uh, if you're visiting, if you're here for the first time, we got a great hospitality room. You just go through these doors, take a left, and there's some goodies, some coffee, some, something to drink, and we would love to meet you. It was amazing last night, um, probably meeting people I haven't met before that have been here uh, for a while, and, and there's just, uh, God is doing some incredible things. So uh, meet somebody. If you haven't met somebody around you, just introduce yourself, okay? There's so many new people that God is bringing to our midst, and I, I realized that last night. So uh, if they don't go in the hospitality room, you go find them, amen? Okay, you find them. If you need prayer, we would love to pray for you. So prayer team, if you could come forward. Um, great group of people uh, that will pray for you. If you uh, can't come forward, just stay in your seat, and they're going to come find you and pray over you as well. And uh, a blessing. So uh, what a great way to start the Christmas season, amen? And we have a story to share with the world and uh, we need to bring that light, and you are the ambassadors of that light. So bring his glory. So start by giving somebody a hug or a handshake. Bless them. Say, the love of Jesus be upon you, okay? God bless. Have a great holiday season. God bless you. Mm -hmm.